We have now come to the point in our research where we're going to create a Works Cited page. We're going to use the website Scribber and the links to our chosen resources, which are on slide 21 of part 1, to create a Works Cited page. A Works Cited page is just a list of all the resources that we referenced in our research paper. To do this, I'm first going to open up the Scribber website. I can tell that Scribber has a link to the website because it's red and it's underlined, it's in a different color. So just a reminder, in order to access that link, I double tap in the text box and then I hold my finger over the word that has the link. Now I can see on the black banner that pops up at the bottom, the fourth option in is to open the link. Now I'm gonna open this in Safari and the first thing I'm going to want to do is up in the top right of my screen, I see this little compass or this circle, which is going to open this up on my actual Safari browser. Right now it's opened up through Google Slides, but here now I can see it's a tab on my browser. So if I scroll down a little bit, I will see a citation generator. So I hit the purple words, and then it brings me to a spot where I can create my first APA citation. If I go back to my Google Slides and hit done, in the top left corner, I'm going to go to my slide that has all my resources written out. So here are the four sources that I used for my research. If I double tap in the text box here, hold my finger down and open this link in Safari, it will bring me to the website that I used. Again, I'm going to hit the Safari button that opens in a new tab. So if I go back, I'm going to toggle now back to my tab that has my citation generator. And first I have to choose a source type. So this was actually a website. So I'm going to click on the first blue box that says websites. The first thing it asks me for is the web page URL. So if I tap back into my article, the URL I'm going to find just in that top search bar. So if I click on it, it should highlight my whole thing in blue. If I touch, I'm going to copy, and then I'm going to go back to my citation generator, touch inside the box, touch one more time, and paste the URL. Okay, the next thing it asks me for is the page title. And actually, I'm going to look down and I see that it asks me for the page URL again. So I'm actually going to just touch twice, hit paste, and paste the URL in there again. Now it is asking me for the page title, or I'm sorry, for the article title. So if I go here, um, the name of the article is how to tell if someone is lying. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to type that in, how to tell if someone is lying. All right. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit more and I see the next thing that it asks me for is the author. So I have some author or some options here. I can go by an, uh, I over here on the right side, I see there's a little box I can check if I don't know who the author was. I have an option here to put the initials and last name of an author, or I have an option to choose that it was created by an organization. In my advanced options, this is where I can title or I can I can add, sorry, um, if there were like a Mr. or a Mrs. You guys aren't going to have to worry about that one. All right, so I'm going to go into my thing and see if I can figure out the author's name. Oh, and I see right up here at the top, it tells me that it's by savvy psychologist Ellen Hendrickson. So I'm going to go back here. Her initials, her first initial would be E. It doesn't give us a middle initial. And her last name was Hendrickson. So I'm going to type that in. And now I have an author. I'm going to scroll down a little further. And the next thing it asks me for is a publication date. So I'm going to go back. And it shows me right here. It was published by Ellen Hendrickson on June 15th of 2016. So I'm going to go in here 
and add in my publication date. So the day was June 15th. So my date would be the 15th. The month was June, which is the sixth month of the year. And the year was 2016. The next thing it asks me for is the date accessed. If you are unsure of what any of these mean, you can also hit the little question mark and it gives you a little bit more information. So it says only provide the retrieval date if the content of the page is likely to change over time and versions are not archived. So all this means you guys, you can enter this information. This just means what day did you find the website? So for me, I found this website two weeks ago. So if today is December 15th, I know that two weeks from today or two weeks prior to today was December 1st. So I'm going to go in and it was the first day of December, which is the 12th month and the year is 2020. And the last thing that it asks me for is the website name. So if I hit the little um, question mark there, it says enter the name of the site that published the information. For example, Scribber, CNN, or the CDC. So if I go back and I look up at the top here, I can see both up in my search bar and in the top middle that this is by Scientific American. So I'm gonna go back to my website generator and I'm going to type in the name of my site, which was Scientific American. All right, now I have all of my information entered. I'm going to hit site source. And now you can see that it has created a works cited pay or a works cited for me for this particular resource. Now that I have created a works cited for one of my resources, I have to go back in and complete the same process for my other three. In order to do this, I'm just going to double tap my home screen, go back into my Google Slides, and hit Done to get back into my slides presentation. I'm going to double tap in the box for my next slide, and I want to show you this one because Newzella, those of you that use Newzella, there's a little bit different um, steps that you have to follow. So same thing though, I'm going to touch on the red lettering hold my finger down until that black banner pops up and choose to open the link. It's going to pop me into the Newzella app if you have it on your iPad. If you don't, it should just pop you to the website. But if it pops you to a screen that looks like this, at the very bottom you should see something that says just browsing, I'll join later. So there's one extra step. Now that I have the app open, up in the top left I should see something that says slides with a back arrow. I'm going to touch that to go back into my slides presentation. If it somehow takes you out of your presentation, that's okay. Just open it again and scroll ahead to slide 21, which is where your material was. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to double tap in my box for source number two, which was my new Zella source. Hold my finger on the red link and choose to open link. When I do that, it should pop me into the article. Now, if I go back to Scribber, this is also another website. I'm going to choose website, and then the first thing I need to do is get that URL. If you are open in the Newzella app, the way you do this is to hit this share button on the right side of my screen. When I hit share, I should see an option here that says copy. I'm going to hit copy, double tap to go back into Scribber, and touch inside this box and paste my information. One thing I forgot to show you is if I hit that little search, um, search icon, it will give me the option to search for my article. And here I can see is the same article I was just using. Lie detector test comes under fire as FBI hiring tool. If I touch on that, it will fill in some of the information for me. So as I scroll down, I can see it has already filled in my title and it has already uh, filled in my website URL. So now I'm just going to complete that process 
first I need to find the author. And this one's a little bit different because I see the author is the McClatchy Tribune, adapted by Newzella. So instead of having a name, I'm going to have an organization. And I'm just going to type that in here, that it was the McClatchy Tribune. And then all of the information is the same as I did before. So I'm going to go in and find the publication date, which was 5 28 2013 05. Oh, nope, I made a mistake. It was the 28th day of the fifth month in the year 2013. And then I accessed this on the same day as my other resource, which was the first day of December in the year 2020. And the website's name was Newzella. So now I'm going to hit cite that source and you can see it has created another um, site for me, another works cited for me. So now I'm going to go through and do that for my other now that I have completed this process for all four of my resources, I need to get this into my Works Cited page on my slides presentation. To do this, off to the left of each of the sources, you should see a little checkbox. It's a little bit hard to see, my iPad is cutting it off, but as I highlight it, you will hopefully be able to see it. So I'm going to check. I want to include all four of these sources. Down at the bottom, you see a couple of different options now that show up in the blue banner. I'm going to hit the copy icon, which looks like two little pieces of paper over the top of each other. So if I hit that, it copies the link to my clipboard. I'm going to double tap my home screen, go back to my slides presentation and my works cited page. Double tap inside the text box where I'm supposed to put my works cited information. Hit return a couple of times to create a space and then touch in the box and hit paste. It will paste the information for all four of my sources, um, but it's going to paste it all together. So all we need to do is go in and add some spaces. And to do that, we look for the authors. So the first author I see here is Hendrickson. The next author is Marcotte. And if you don't remember this, all I would have to do is double tap Go back to my Scribber site and you can see that Marcotte is my second source. So if I go here and touch right before it says Marcotte, hit return a couple of times. The next one was by the McClatchy Tribune. So again, I'm going to go in, touch right before McClatchy Tribune, space a couple of times. And the last one was by Sanders. So I'm going to go in and move my cursor and space a couple of times. And now you can see that I have a completed works cited page.